G7s yeah, in G leaders' meetings, did you find different countries were, um, to quote a predecessor yeah, I mean, of a... your, don't go wobbly? This thing was a huge shock, right? We, we, uh, we were all taken, I mean, we could see the, the Russian battalion tactical groups massing, but different countries had very different perspectives. I mean, be in no doubt that the, the French were in, deni you know, were in denial right up to the last moment. The, the Germans, for all sorts of sound economic reasons, really didn't want it to, uh, you know, they were, they were I, I'll tell you a terrible thing. Uh, the German view was at one stage that if it were going to happen, which would be a disaster, then it were better for the whole thing to be over quickly and for Ukraine to, to fold. And uh, I couldn't support that. I, uh, you know, that, you know I, I thought that was a disastrous uh, way of looking at it. But I can understand why they thought and felt as they, they did. I remember the Italians, again, massively dependent on, on, on Russian hydrocarbons, at one stage simply saying, you know, that they, uh, they would be unable to, to support the position we were taking. But then what happened was everybody, Germans, French, Italians, everybody, Joe Biden, saw that there was simply no option because you couldn't negotiate with this guy. That's the key point. That's where the logic all, all, all breaks down when people call for a, a negotiated solution. There is no deal. He's right. not offering one. He doesn't even want one. Which takes me to this. And, and, and Zelensky isn't in a position to do one. His people wouldn't let him.